Money Matters on FOSS 107 with Hinkley and Rugby Building Society. So welcome to Money Matters, Colin. Got some interesting questions for you today. Now, last week we said we were going to be talking about credit card debt and stuff like that. But first of all, got to say a very good uh, morning to Rachel. Now, Rachel says, how do I find out about my credit score and what are the best ways to improve it? Okay, very good question. And I'm glad I'm glad that Rachel's interested in her credit score because a lot of people don't don't always understand the impact it can have. You know, I've I've met so many people who out of the service, the bad service they've had, they decide not to pay a bill. Morally, that might be a good stance to take, but it could end up on their credit score. So there are there are a few companies that who you can t- you can get an app from them and you can regularly check your credit score with those companies. Now, um, the one that I'm most used to is Experian. Um, and you uh, you download it, they will gather your data and they will give you a score, I think, out of a thousand. Um, if you are if you're say applying for a mortgage, um, your lender will do um, sometimes a credit score, but definitely a credit check. And that credit check will identify any um, any sort of in- installment payments that you do, whether it's credit card, loans, mortgages, car loans. It will tell the lender whether you met the payments on time every time or whether you started to be late with your payments or whether in fact you've missed the payments. Right. So is it true that I've heard stories, I don't know whether they're true or not, of people that have never had credit and then they apply for credit because they've got no credit history that they struggle to get it. Can that be a case as well? It is is true. Now, I don't particularly like that scenario because Mm. it's, it's unfair to punish someone who has probably done the right thing all their life and has never had a credit card, never built yeah. up debt. Now, what I wouldn't advise Andy to do is, is to go and get a credit card, build up a huge debt, and then say, well, I'm just trying to demonstrate my credit score. That's that's not a good idea. Um, but if, if you are, for the first time, looking, say, for a mortgage, and you haven't had any other debt, um, speak to speak to one of the organizations like Hinkley and Rugby that do manual underwriting. So a human being um, decides whether that mortgage is approved or not. And a human being understands that, you know, Mr. Foster has uh, not had a credit card before, has not had an overdraft before, has not oh, had I have. <laughs> All and of they're... the above. I've got to say uh, good morning to John. John says, why are credit card interest rates so high? There is no security for that lender. So they cannot say, OK, Mr. Foster, I'm going to take repossession of your house, your car, any other assets. It's completely zero security. And therefore, they lose money. Credit cards um, have sort of stabilised a, a, an interest rate which is not, you know, is not price regulated. But if you remember some of the other organisations that were around, Wonga, yeah, maybe, maybe a name you remember, Mark. Yeah, you know there was there was um, some involvement by government and then financial regulators to make sure that that type of debt had some type of um, limits on it. Just a quick one from Phil in the Neaton. Phil says, how come I can only pay £45 on my contactless card, but my Apple Pay is unlimited? So it's a good, very good point. And all you need to do is take the card and put it against the machine. Yeah. There's no PIN number, there's no signature, there's no other identification. So therefore, it's a higher risk. Now, there is a consultation going on at the moment to increase it from £45. I think I'm right in saying that there's a talk about it going to 100 All I can assume, Mark, is that the security around Apple Pay is slightly different. 
Right. And that it's um, there must be some security features. I don't use it myself that mean that um, there's less risk than just, you know, taking a card out of somebody's pocket and then tapping it against the machine. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Colin, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Really do appreciate it. And um, of course, next week, um, we're asking FOSS 107 listeners to uh, text us in questions about money and mental health, because next week it's Mental Health Week. And I know that's really important to you um, at uh, the Hinkley Rugby Building Society. So we're going to be talking about mental health and money next week. Uh, so thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week, Mike. I look forward to it, Mark. See you then.